Watching, looking, discriminating. They were just using me, taking me for a ride. They start calling me names and stuff like that, and I just didn't like it. It kind of knocks your confidence. I was in a vulnerable situation. It was, it was my, my own dad sometimes. But one of me. Put me, call me the Mongo back to come in four hours. It's wrong, and I think that people who do this should be locked up and going to jail. In 2008, Fiona Pilkington was driven to kill herself and her disabled daughter due to the decade of persistent prejudice she faced in her community. Just last year, Panorama uncovered severe cruelty within a residential care home in Bristol. The parents of one victim had no idea any of this was going on. Horrific incidences where patients had been hit, kicked, and even had freezing cold water poured over them caused uproar within the media. I never thought she was treated like that. Not in a million years. As shocking as it may seem, disability discrimination is still dominant in today's society and is something that needs to be addressed. My name is Parvis, I'm from Springwood. In bus stop I have, some call me Pakistani and, and, and they call me, and, and they call me racist, they kick me on the leg did it, the punch in the face did it. Does it happen every day or does it happen every so often? Every day. Any crime where the, the victim um, feels that they are being targeted because they have a disability, name calling, it could we just be bullying? But if they think, you know, if the victim feels it is against them because they've got a learning disability, then it's a hate crime. I got beaten up by some boys on my street. I didn't say anything to them. All they did is come and give you, come and I want, I want your money, or I'm going to come and kick your head in. So they just dragged me on the floor, got attacked by them. I um, got dragged on the floor with my hood and I had muddy clothes. And then after when that happened, I got a firework thrown at my leg and um, I got a baseball bat wrapped around my head. Half my children and parents and one parent was being a bit of a bully, shouting, screaming, leave my daughter alone, I'll, I'll kick everything in, in your back, and children saying, you know, breaking my windows and smashing it. And, um, <coughs> he used to live at Pay Road in the prison, and kids were calling me names, and parents, and one woman was nasty, and they kept breaking my windows and calling me. Oh, here's a peanut farm, and uh, there was an incident a month ago. I was coming home, and a bloke was being nasty, and he said, Hey, you, I want you out of Nottingham. Well, people don't understand about people with learning disabilities. I think people, most people who've got children, don't understand that. People learn to have a right to live in a society. Mate crime, the befriending, then abusing, of a disabled person's friendship has recently become a common issue. Like, I was like hanging around with these 60 and 17 year old girls about a year ago, and then I found out that they weren't really my friends, and they were just using me and taking me for a ride, and then they asked me to meet them up the alleyway on a Friday night near to where I live and, and this youth came out from like three quarters of the way up and started and said and I'd start affecting me with a lighter and that's on my phone and my wallet and, and I was scared because there was one on one with him and I, I had to give my wallet over to him because I was scared of being burnt alive. And <laughs> 
Jenny lives in a residential care home. Whilst she is happy now, previous experiences of bullying will not be forgotten. I shouldn't be jealous, but I kind of am. Smile Stop Hate Crime is a project set up by Nottingham Mencap that combats hate crime on a local level. When it's not a crime, it is difficult for them to, you know, if, if they're just name calling, it's not, it's not a crime, it, it's a concern, it's, it's um, an incident, if you like, but it's not a crime. We encourage reporting, um, we go out, we do lots of campaigning, you know, to tell people that disability hate crime is wrong and that it needs to be stopped and that people should report it. We go to schools and talk to children. Um, to tell them that hate crime is wrong. Whilst campaigns have recently brought this issue into light, actually targeting the offenders has caused problematic. Obviously, by the very nature of their disability, you know, the, um, the quality of evidence they may be able to provide might not be what an able-bodied person could provide, in which case, you know, that sort of weakens the case. So it's, it's very, very difficult to, to define. Mencap set up its Stand By Me campaign in 2011, working alongside police forces across the country in their attempt to help combat disability hate crime. We saw mention of disability hate crime in the Criminal Justice Act in 2003, um, and Mencap had done some work previous to that in um, the year 2000 with our Living in Fear reports. But it wasn't until really 2007 with the Fiona Pilkington case that people started to actually sit up and take notice of this as a really serious issue. Um, and hopefully that's been a bit of a watershed moment and now sort of five years after that we're beginning to get some sort of progress in the way not just the police but the government and other agencies are actually beginning to tackle the issue. Voice UK is an organisation that works in the criminal justice system, helping learning disabled people fight for the justice they deserve. We kind of have uh, three main workshops that we deliver to people with learning disabilities who are our main client group really. Uh, and they're, they're on subjects like keeping safe, uh, abuse and bullying. In order to justify spending resources you have to have an identifiable problem. And up until 2007-2008 there wasn't an official identified problem. And certainly in the criminal justice system a lot of the issues about hate crime are kind of more on the agenda now than certainly they were 20 years ago. You know, people come to our groups with problems and they get resolved and, you know, I think they find, they, they grow confidence from that really. It's, it's on all of us really to take more notice of who's living in our community and, and to support that person. If we see somebody being harassed locally, to try and support that person as well. I think it's going to be a steady change. But I think there should be a steady kind of improvement over the next couple of years. What Mencap wants is to move to a situation where sort of the mainstream sort of attitude is one where we don't mock disabled people, um, but we see them as, as equal. And I think that will, that is definitely possible. Can we eradicate disability hate crime and sort of disabled attitudes in entirety? No, there will probably be an element of people who will always hold that those views, but. The aim is that actually the mainstream view is not one that is acceptable to mock disabled people. Now we're saying no, you know, it's society has to change really to protect them. To stop picking on disabled people who get spoiled in the streets and that. You shouldn't pick on the disabled and you shouldn't go out and call people names. Just don't bully and pick on people which are... which which I've learned it could it affect your knees because they because they want to go out to have a good time. Which <laughs> <laughs>